Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In this video, we will go through 15 sample questions and answer them in detail to help you prepare for the AI 100 designing and implementing an Azure AI solution exam. In case if you would like to purchase the entire set of practice questions, use the link in the description below. I request you to comment if you would like me to do this sample test for any other Azure certification and do subscribe, share and like the video. Let's get started. A project team is building a scalable solution and needs to capture the event hub streaming data in Azure Data Lake Storage. This is required so that they don't have to expend efforts on data capture and can concentrate on data processing. The solution requires processing of both batch-based and real-time pipelines on the same stream. Which of the below is the best choice? Since the team is already capturing the streaming data with Event Hubs, the right choice would be Event Hubs Capture. But let's dig in a bit to understand what are Event Hubs and what are Event Hubs Capture. To use Event Hubs, you would create an Event Hubs namespace and within this namespace, you can create several Event Hubs. But if you want to capture the streaming data in Event Hubs into Azure Storage, you would select this option and this is called the Event Hubs Capture. So with Event Hubs Capture, you can load the streaming data into either Azure Storage or Data Lake by specifying a time or a size interval. All the other options are different Azure data services and do not allow us to capture Event Hubs data in Azure Data Lake Storage. To reduce the inconvenience caused in locating free parking slots, a company uses image classification at the edge with custom vision to determine the availability of parking spots in a garage. Identify the sequence in which the below three actions are performed. Well, the advantage of using image classification at the edge is that the company does not have to transfer all its data to the central cloud. Image classification happens within its own network on the edge with the help of Azure IoT Edge. The first step is to build an image classifier with custom vision module. Next, you will use the files from the previous step to configure your image classifier to run as an IoT Edge module. And then the remaining step will be the final step. So the right order is 2, 1 and 3. So option B is the right choice. Well, you can pause and go through this question, but what it essentially states is that there is a shipping company and they have installed IoT sensors on their ships. We need to select an Azure service that's most suitable for picking up the events from the ingestion layer in real time and which performs data analysis and transformation and then finally which sends the data for storage to the serving layer. So, well, this article talks about ingesting and processing real-time IoT data, which is very close to what's described in the question. Here, a car manufacturing company ingests data in real-time from sensors in the vehicle through Azure IoT Hub. Azure Databricks then analyzes the messages to understand things like vehicle location and other information emitted through different types of sensors. It then processes the messages and sends the data to serving layer for storage. Finally, the data is stored for analysis to provide actionable insights. So the right answer is Azure Databricks. Azure IoT Hub facilitates communication between IoT apps and its devices and it cannot be used to perform analysis and transformation of data. Power BI is an analytics tool ideal for generating and sharing insights. Azure Data Factory performs ETL and ELT workloads and it doesn't do data transformation by itself which will be an ideal storage solution when images and videos are required to be stored locally at the edge until they are processed. 
Well, there are several reasons why you would want to store data at the edge rather than on the centralized cloud. In addition to the scenario mentioned in the question, you would store data locally at the edge when the devices have limited connectivity or you want to avoid latency which is crucial in real-time applications like self-driving cars or you want to avoid the bandwidth cost of transferring large amounts of data to the cloud. In all these scenarios, you can deploy a blob storage module onto your IoT Edge device which exactly behaves like an Azure blob service except that the blobs are stored locally on your IoT Edge device. So the right answer is deploying blob storage module on IoT Edge. There is nothing like Azure IoT Edge parallel storage so option D is incorrect. Option B2 looks like a cooked up name just for the sake of this example. And Apache Spark is a parallel processing framework and doesn't provide any storage on edge devices. Apache Hadoop MapReduce splits input data into independent chunks. After that, they are processed in parallel across nodes. A MapReduce job consists of two functions namely a mapper and a reducer. There are two definitions given in this question and our task is to associate the correct definition for the mapper and the reducer. Well, have a look at this basic word count map reduce job. The mapper consumes the input data, analyzes it with filter and sorting operations and emits key value pairs. The reducer consumes the key value pairs emitted by the mapper and performs a summary operation to create a combined result. Well, from the definitions given, performing analysis on the input data and outputting key value pairs is performed by the mapper function, so option A. And processing the key value pair and creating summary data is performed by the reducer function, so option D. You are working on an AI solution that will focus on deep learning training and inference scenarios and use compute intensive algorithm. Select a virtual machine that is appropriate for each scenario. Well, the general purpose VMs are ideal for testing and development of small to medium sized databases and web servers with low to medium traffic. So option C and D are incorrect. Storage optimized VMs are best suited for big data, SQL and NoSQL databases, data warehousing and large transactional databases. So options E and F are incorrect too. GPU optimized VMs are specialized virtual machines designed for compute intensive and graphic intensive workloads. AI and deep learning are some of the examples. So for both the scenarios, GPU optimized VMs will be the most appropriate choice. Azure Bot communicates with the Bot Connector service. To implement security, whenever a bot sends a request to the connector service or vice versa, relevant information must be included which the service can use to verify the identity. Which of the below could be used between the bot and the bot connector service for identity verification? What the question asks is, what service level authentication takes place between a bot and the bot connector service so that the identity of each of them can be verified before establishing a communication? Well, four different authentication technologies are used to establish trust between a bot and the bot connector. They are SSL or TLS, OAuth 2.0, JSON Web Token and OpenID Metadata. So all four are right choices. You design an AI solution that performs analysis on time series data in batches which detects fraud by identifying deviations from normal behavior. Which cognitive service would you use? The personalizer helps application learn from real-time behavior and present the best experience to the customer. So option A is incorrect. 
Text analytics performs natural language functions over raw text such as sentiment analysis, key phrase extraction, language detection and so on. Anomaly detector helps in monitoring the time series data and detects anomalies with machine learning. So option C is the right answer. Ink recognizer helps in handwriting recognition so absolutely unrelated to detecting anomalies. You are working on building an application that performs the below two actions. Action 1 evaluates if the faces in two pictures belong to the same person. Action 2 is a match action between two sets of provided faces and helps find a subset of faces that look similar to the target face. And you have two APIs, the similar API and the verify API. We need to match the correct API to use for the requirement. To perform the action of evaluating if the faces in two pictures belong to the same person, we use Verify API. And to perform the action of finding a subset of faces that look similar to the target face, we use Find Similar API. So options B and C. Identify which statement is true. The first statement says that the customer is charged for data ingestion while using Azure Monitor Log Analytics. And the second statement says that the customer is charged for data retention. Well, if you look at the pricing page of Azure Monitor, it says that for log analytics, you pay for both data ingestion and data retention. For data ingestion, you can either reserve capacity upfront or pay as you go. And all data ingested into log analytics can be retained free of charge for up to 31 days. And beyond those 31 days, you are charged for data retention. So both these statements are correct. Options A and C. Which Azure service enables users to register, discover, understand and eventually consume the data sources and addresses the challenges of data source discovery for users? Azure Data Catalog, unlike other Azure data services, doesn't process any data but rather is a data discovery service which helps you to define and locate data. So it contains all the definitions, the locations of all the data in your enterprise and if you need some data about an order, data catalog should tell you exactly where it is. Azure data catalog will be the right answer for this question. Option A is incorrect as Azure data factory is for running ELT or ETL workloads in the cloud. Option B is incorrect as Databricks is an analytic service based on Apache Spark. And Cosmos DB is a fully managed NoSQL database service, so the other options don't address the challenges of data discovery. You build an application that extracts text from handwritten and printed text, text-heavy images and multi-page PDF. Which of the below should you use? Computer Vision Analyze Image API does not perform text extraction. Rather, it performs activities like object detection, brand detection, image categorization and image description. Custom Vision API helps you to build your own image classifiers. Content Moderator performs moderation of the content and handles content that is potentially offensive. Read API is specifically designed to extract text from images which are considered text dominant. So for extracting text from text heavy images and multi-page PDF, Read API is the right choice. Your colleague is working on automated machine learning in Azure and has set the training job time as 0.25 in the exit criterion. What is the maximum time that this experiment will end in? Well, first it's important to know where would you specify this exit criterion. 
So let's actually go and create a new automated ML run in Azure Machine Learning Studio. I already have this data set, so let's select this and give a name for this experiment and specify the target column to predict. I also have the compute cluster created, so let's select that. Select the model to train for your data set and view additional configuration settings. You can see the option there for exit criterion. Well, there are two main options you can define. One is the length of time your experiment should run after which the experiment will end. Or you can also end the experiment after a specified primary metric score is reached. If I just try to specify the duration, you can see that 0.25 hours is equivalent to 15 minutes which also happens to be the minimum training job time required. And there you go, that's our answer as well. A project team implements search related features using Azure Cognitive Search. Arrange the below steps in the correct sequence so that they can use Cognitive Search without any issues. Azure Cognitive Search helps you to search for your data in data stores. So you can integrate the search with your web or mobile applications so your users can search from historical data even from images and documents. Well, there are four steps in setting up and using Cognitive Search. The first one, as usual with every other Azure service, is to provision the service. Next, you create an index that mimics the structure of documents you wish to search. Third step is to load the data into the search index. And the final step is to issue search queries to your service endpoint. So the order is 3, 2, 4, 1 and option A is the right answer. Azure offers NLP capabilities for the below services. Map the services with the correct scenario that you will use. Well, look at this documentation on how to choose an NLP technology in Azure. If you observe the key selection criteria, you will note that for pre-built models, the best choice is Microsoft Cognitive Services as it already provides built-in APIs and client SDKs. For the first scenario, it will be service 2, so option C. But if you need to train models against a large corpus of text data, Azure HD Insight with Spark ML library is the right choice, so option B. Once you are done, submit the test and you can verify your performance from the result. Also, you get the performance report domain-wise, so you can analyze the questions for any particular domain and you will see all the questions related to that domain, their correct answers and explanations for each question and also links to the Microsoft documentation in case you like to learn the concept in depth. So if you are serious about clearing the AI 100 exam, check the description for the link to entire practice test that cover the length and breadth of all the objectives in the exam. Also, please comment if you would like me to do this sample test for any other Azure certification and do subscribe, share and like the video.